Hi, my name is Gary Taylor. I want to show you through WinForms and how to do data binding manually. Okay, here we have a, a simple form with first name, surname, and dear Sal. And as we put the first name and surname in, it's going to actually put the full name um, into the dear Sal and a save button, which will increment just to prove that the actual save button does something. If we go into the code behind, just show you through some of the data binding settings that we have here. So this is pretty simple. We have a view model which is going to hold all of our data, and that's the model that's going to help hold it. Then we initialize the components, and in the onload, we override this so we can set up the binding. Now we need to do that in the onload because if we do that in the constructor, our user data model will be null and the bindings will break. So here we have a simple binding on the cell 2 text box. We set up the data binding when we say what we want to bind to. So we're going to say that within the user details model, a property called cell 2 should be bound to the text box of text cell 2. So if we can imagine what we're doing here is we're doing um, cell to text equals um, user data control view model dot cell to. Now if we did that this way, then we have to do that in reverse. So if we wanted to get the data out, we would actually have to take this part and take that out and then it equals text cell two dot text and do any formatting and other conditions to make this work you'll see a lot of winform apps that have code that loads the data and then saves the data and it's really quite pointless so to recap with this syntax at the top what we're doing is is we're saying that the cell two's text box so cell two's text box is going to be bound to user details model so any model that you've decided to hold your dcls in and then the property of cell 2 which is cell 2 we allow formatting and we also specify the way that it's updated now there's a couple of ways of binding and in these examples we're pretty much doing the same thing i've laid this out so that it can be easily displayed here but we would normally put this on one line We've got exactly the same thing for first name, but what I'm doing is I'm using the name of property. The good thing about this is that um, if we decide to change what we're binding to, we can do. Now, we could argue that text is always going to be text, but if we do change it or if something changes, that won't work. For example, here we can see that the cell 2 is being bound. Well. If we go into that property and change cell 2 to something else, then the code is still going to run, but it's not going to bind correctly because that property doesn't exist anymore. And when we run, we'll actually get a runtime error because the bindings won't set up. Where with this, we are actually specifying the property that's then getting converted to a string and put in. So it works in exactly the same way. But because we've done this, if we refactor this, and say for instance we've got one further down here which is the surname if we change surname to last name this will still keep on working we won't have a problem where our code will just stop and you can imagine in a large application that has uh, thousands of bindings across many forms that could come in handy we can also set up binding where we create the binding object and store that so that we can then just add it. Now it's exactly the same thing because we're creating an instance of a binding object and just passing it straight in, which means that garbage collection is going to get rid of it underneath, which is pretty pretty good. However, if we wanted to do something like formatting, then what we'll have to do is create an instance that we can hold on to of this binding object, pass that in as a binding property, and then we can set up formatting and all this formatting is doing is going to take the surname and, and title it and make it title case. So let's run this and see what we get.
I have a couple of examples here, but this version 2 is the one that I'm currently working on. So if we do something uh, like John, Connor, if we move out, we can see that the um, Connor was uh, title guest for us. And John Connor has been put into the cell too. If I click, then we can see that it's actually doing something. So we can see that the the actual information is being updated. If I change this and just use my mouse to move away, you can see that it actually defaults back to what it was. Now that's due to the type of binding that is set up. What I've done is within this uh, bit of code. I've set up the binding model that I want to use. If I change that to one property change, then this mode is being used in the bindings. If I then run this exact same code and make some changes and uh, move, use the mouse, then you can see that it updates. If I use the mouse there and update, you can see that the data is updating. So that's the way that we can handle that data binding. Now, why would we want to manually add these bindings? Well, the type safe way of doing this can only be done when you do it by hand. Unfortunately, if you do it within the designer, then you use, lose the ability rather to um, have this as strongly typed. It actually puts it in as strings by default, which I hate. Also, if you want to be able to add your own custom formatting and do clever things with the binding object, you'll have to grab hold of it. Now, the downside to this is that Having to put all of this code in the onload does make the code behind look more complicated. Uh, you have to maintain that and keep that up to date. Also, you need an onload method to be able to do this binding. If you try and do this binding within the constructor, then it's possible that the user model won't be set up correctly and you can't bind to things that are currently null, so that will fail. Just to recap with the view model, just so that you know exactly what's in here, we've just got a, um, a very basic view model. If you can just bear with me one sec, it's like press the wrong button. This view model's just got a few properties, which is first name and surname and cell two, which are the three things that you, sh you could see on the screen. We've got the save routine and the update cell two, which concatenates and puts that into cell two. Then we've got the property change. Um, to make sure that the UI is updated when we do in fact make a change to the model. We have a couple of events that I'm raising because there's a few things that are happening. Save and update cell 2 and that just notifies anyone that wants to care about this or who wants to subscribe to that event. So if we look at the main form we can see that there's a text box at the top and then there's a user control uh, here. Now what we're able to do is we're able, able to update that text box control that's inside the main form even though the event was handled within the user control. The way I'm doing that is that I'm actually subscribing to that save event and calling this action which will actually just put the data into the user control. In this example I've, I've got a couple and you can see that if I click that one and that one and that one you can see that um, the text is changing at the top. And I've also got different values that are updating. Spell John right. Not that it matters in a test. So we can see that that data is then going through. You can see that that's updating. That's because this form at the top is subscribing to these um, save events and then that updates that text box. It's a really nice way to decouple your code. Even though you've got WIM forms, you can actually still allow a parent to access or get access to the things that the user controls or children are doing without causing tightly coupled code because you would actually map uh, to the individual view models events. It's a very good way of working. So that's how we can do custom data binding and how we can set that up within code. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe.